she hulk episode 3 has dropped so if you have watched it let's talk about it in a full spoiler way the entire marvel studios logo appears as it normally is so no stylistic music or uh, some creative coloring which means that we have to approach the episode in a very neutral way the episode begins with jennifer walters arriving at the prison as jennifer walters which is a contradictory because she was hired to lead the superhuman division because she is she hulk she's angry because of what happened in episode 2 ending where we saw abomination fighting wong and the foot is getting leaked here jennifer walters specifically says that she demands an explanation why he failed to mention that he escaped the prison meaning when jennifer walters first met abomination he already had escaped the prison and now he knew that his case was complicated perhaps that's why he demanded a lawyer specifically from the hulk family so he says that he can transform at will and he was forced to leave with him from the prison that does not make sense what is more plausible that he is good friends with wong and fighting him in the tournament was just as a favor i don't know this next part is played as a joke or what but emil blonsky introduces wong as a sorcerer supreme of the mystic arts which is wrong he is the sorcerer supreme that is if you consider just the present tense and just this universe next we see nikki checking out wong's profile from her phone it appears as if she's checking his linkedin in it there is mention that for 9 years he was a target sales associate at kamataj nepal after that he was for 11 years librarian at kamataj which is a continuity error because as we know that wong became a librarian in doctor strange because the previous librarian was killed by kaiselius and then he stayed a librarian until he became sorcerer supreme that is till the end of avengers infinity war when doctor strange got dusted and over a technicality wong became the sorcerer supreme even if we assume that he stayed a librarian after becoming sorcerer supreme i don't know how they came to 11 years because 2016 is when doctor strange released so 11 years after that means 2027 Moving forward it's very likely that this mobile view is a green screen and the image was put later which is why she speaks the dialogue wrong when she says that either he's a sorcerer who lives in New York or a librarian who lives in Kamataj as we can see clearly on the screen it is mentioned that at present Wong is in New York there's no doubt about that Also we see that they have a mutual connection that is Bruce Banner. Although this is not that significant but here it makes it clear that Bruce Banner knows Nikki, his cousin's best friend. Actually it is relevant. Wouldn't it make more sense to contact Bruce Banner to get to Wong? Although we know that is not possible, she does not know that. Perhaps the Bruce Banner link in the profile was an unnecessary thing. After that Jennifer asks if she can get to him get to Wong to which she says that she sent him a thirst trap it was a picture of her with a bunch of books for those who don't know a thirst trap is a social media post especially a selfie or other photo intended to elicit sexual attention appreciation of one's attractiveness or other positive feedback which is funny joke on sorcerers because the sorcerers are after a lot of books like it was book of cagliostro and doctor strange then book of vishanti in multiverse of madness and followed by dark hold so jennifer walters rants about how wong ruined her case but she calls wong as this guy as if she does not know him and immediately in the next second when she breaks the fourth wall she speaks as if she knows wong perfectly Does this mean that when she breaks the fourth wall she immediately becomes what do you call that uh, all knowing omniscient not just that perhaps omnipotent as well which is why she can remove her hand from the steering wheel and let the car drive itself while she breaks the fourth wall okay i'm not a fashion expert but why is she wearing that baggy suit 
I know it is more appropriate because she will become the She-Hulk size, so the suit must fit even then. But the big suit just looks bad. Before the She-Hulk title card, she also mentions that this is a show where every week there will be a guest appearance. Although she specifically denies it, but most likely that is the case. Perhaps that's where significant amount of budget went, paying the known actors of MCU like. Daredevil or Hulk or the surprises that are yet to come. After the title we see a bunch of news reportings and social media posts repeating the same thing that just happened and then reacting to it that is she hulk representing abomination and the backlash that followed which is contradictory to what happened in episode 1 where people at the bar cheered for her being the she hulk. I didn't see the relevance of this montage in the plot This is more like actual breaking the fourth wall and people reacting to the MCU phase 4 with comments like no more female superheroes please why are you turning every superhero into a girl etc the montage ends with we see in the office nikki is checking the social media and that's when she hulk enters as she hulk from the entrance itself we can see that it's a bad cgi of she hulk which makes me wonder why does she have to be big and green in this scene she's just in her office she can be her normal self this is followed by nikki saying saying to she hulk that she should take control of her narrative considering what the previous montage was it feels a bit offensive to the audience and those critiquing mcu when the main character says i don't care what anybody says anything about me The comments are made to show that people don't like the fact that the new Hulk is a woman just like the new female Thor, female Hawkeye, Loki, Iron Man, possibly even Black Panther and the list goes on. Okay, getting back on track, Jennifer gets a call and she's called by Holloway. So she leaves the office and Nikki follows her. Nikki tells her that there is a lot of buzz around this case and Jennifer should give an interview to put forth her side of the story but Jennifer insists that this media circus is all because of the involvement of abomination unfortunately this does not reflect the montage we saw earlier she hulk enters Holloway's office and there she sees Dennis her colleague from the DA's office and that guy who has absolutely no filter and is very offensive to a level that he seems unrealistic correct me if i'm wrong to prove the point that he is offensive first he says he does not want jennifer walters on that case because they have a history if that is not enough they call another woman a character by the name mallory book just so he can speak to her in an offensive way and then she can leave without caring about the client The case Dennis Bukowski has come with is that he has been defrauded by an ex-girlfriend and he wants to file a suit against her to get his money back. The reason he has come to a superhuman law division because the ex-girlfriend in question is a shape-shifting light elf. The reason to specify light elf is because we have seen dark elves in Thor second part. So this shape-shifting alien pretended to be a multiple Grammy award winner mega star Megan Thee Stallion. I'm pretty sure she is a fictional character but is she spoofing someone? I don't know. Perhaps that's why the joke does not land when Jennifer Walters tries to make fun of Dennis because he thinks that he could make a celebrity his girlfriend. This is where Wong arrives through the portal saying that he got a message from Jennifer Walters message being weird photographs by Nikki holding books so Wong arrives to confirm that what Emil Blonsky said is true that is he took him against his own will because he required a worthy opponent as it was part of his training to become a sorcerer supreme two things Wong was not Sorcerer Supreme during Shang-Chi but he became one during or before the events of No Way Home. Second, Wong is lying. If it was just about training they would do at Kamartaj or some abandoned place, why would they fight publicly in Macau? Most likely it was for him to earn money. 
which means he is short of money which was indicated during the events of infinity war speaking of no way home he talks about wong not wanting to erase memories again which probably means that no way home has probably happened at this point this is followed by wong referencing mirror dimension which we already know but in addition to that he also mentions shadow dimension i don't know if that is a specific place but there is a shadow realm which we saw in thor love and thunder perhaps what as guardians called realm is what sorcerers call dimension meanwhile in another room pug is talking to bakowski about the case regarding how much money he spent on this imposter once the client leaves pug plays the video where it is revealed that the megan the stallion celebrity was actually an imposter it's on a youtube spoof called you screen this is a bit strange because we have seen that youtube exists in mcu that is in spider-man homecoming and miss marvel although we don't see youtube logo in miss marvel a fun fact uh, if you scan the qr code on the screen it will take you to a link where you can read free she hulk comic book just like that moon knight episode too i guess it's also interesting that they are using a shape shifting white elf when we know that there is another alien species with pointy ears that can shape shift and they're getting their own show where many known characters would be revealed as imposters secret invasion what follows after this scene is very interesting where the imposter actually arrives at the court room and pretends to be first it pretends to be Bukowski and then it pretends to be Pug although the situation itself is funny i don't know why they had to put in a dialogue like i love harassing women in the workplace and then the actual character defending himself that he actually doesn't is that meant to be funny the day of hearing arrives and jennifer walters arrives at the ultra security prison she walks past the reporters without talking to them Since the hearing is at the prison, Jennifer Walter will have to be herself while defending abomination, which defeats the purpose as to why she was hired. Okay, the one funny thing happens in the reporters is the reflection of the society where rumors are picked up as real news. One reporter says that is it true that she got rejected from the Avengers and the other reporter immediately picks up as the news that she got rejected by the Avengers. Speaking of Avengers, MCU has still not addressed the status of Avengers after Endgame that is passing of Tony Stark, Captain Rogers and Natasha Romanoff. We begin with the proceedings and Jennifer Walters begins defending Blonsky. The entire thing is just a setup to what Blonsky is up to or what he would do next. If the purpose of this scene is to show how Jennifer Walters is a smart lawyer, the scene does nothing for it, which makes me wonder why Jennifer Walters was hired in the first place. Good courtroom drama stress on the research or the work that lawyers do prior to the hearing and how they cleverly use that resource in the proceedings. But we are seeing no such thing in this episode. just random people come to defend him still the jury is not convinced because bulonski escaped the prison although waiting for wong is a right thing still she puts no effort into stressing on the fact that he escaped but he also returned to the prison when he didn't have to that's when wong arrives he apologizes saying that he lost track of time but it would have been much interesting had he come with a lot of injuries on his face and body and he would have just said that i couldn't come because there was some witch problem referring to the events of multiverse of madness wong asks them have you ever heard of kuma type although i don't know what exactly he's talking about but there is this type of rock called kuma type which is an ultra mythic mantle derived volcanic rock i don't know if that's it but uh, before we get any explanation the scene cuts away to another in the other court room the white elf case is going on that woman is referred to as runa who is an elfian diplomat on asgard now living in new asgard so she has diplomatic immunity 
Diplomatic immunity is a principle of international law by which certain foreign government officials are not subject to the jurisdiction of local courts and other authorities for both their official and to large extent their personal activities to which the judge highlights that they are not in new asgard which is a good opportunity to highlight that asgard is not a place it's a people perhaps the judge knows about it because it was part of the play that was conducted which we saw in thor ragnarok and then in love and thunder the thing that follow in court proceedings further it iterate that no rational person would be fooled by this impersonator hence further trashing this da employee's reputation this is further highlighted when the character himself says that he met this impersonator through hollywood hookup subscription it's like the writers of this show have made dennis bukowski as their personal punching bag and that is justified by him saying some offensive lines although the judge believes that bukowski cannot be fooled so easily still he does not dismiss the case and agrees for the proceedings when the judge leaves the impersonator pretends to be the judge and tries to change the result of this hearing although the expressions on her face makes it clear that it's meant just as a joke This makes me wonder what kind of incompetent diplomats are there at New Asgard. Cutting back to Blonsky's case. Wong clearly admits that Blonsky is not at fault and he takes all the blame for his escape. Here Wong clearly mentions that he offered Blonsky to come to Kamataj, which is beautiful in this time of the year, which probably means that either Kamataj has been rebuilt after the events of Multiverse of Madness. or the events of multiverse of madness have not happened yet when that aspect is cleared out the jury questions emil blonsky's other side abomination that he is a bloodthirsty monster to settle that he transforms into abomination and back into human form here it is interesting to see that he is in a prison cell that is meant to contain the abomination and yet people are scared of him even though he did not try to attack on contrary to that in the first episode when that woman attacked the court she was considered an influencer rather than some criminal to be scared of what are they implying through that okay the hearing is heard and they don't declare the result yet but they put the blame on wong for helping a prisoner to escape This is where Wong leaves without giving them any kind of response. In Civil War, Sokovia Accords were to restrict the movement of heroes. But how do you restrict sorcerers? Clearly there are certain people above law, which points out a logical flaw in the other case where a shape-shifting alien is trying to defend herself. Can't she simply disappear by taking another form? This is followed by Jennifer Walters leaving the prison. She still has to walk past the reporters ignoring them. Meanwhile, the reporters spread more rumors as they usually do. The final reporter speaks of protesters protesting Jennifer Walters, which we don't see. But then in the following bar scene, Jennifer Walters says that someone wrote on her car monster defending monster. Perhaps this is where the social media montage with appropriate messaging would have been relevant. In the following bar scene, Nikki continues to stress Jennifer to give an interview to clear her side of the story. That's when Pug arrives to connect the A and B story. I don't think breaking the fourth wall was necessary here to state the obvious. Also confusing. Till now I thought that when Jennifer Walters broke the fourth wall she was talking to the audience to the viewers but when she says connecting the A and B story nice it's like she's talking to the writers and creators of the show complimenting how they weave the story together it's like patting your own back for writing a good story Bukowski bashing continues as Pug suddenly gets an epiphany when Jennifer describes him as terminally deluded. 
Meanwhile, Nikki calls him gross. Now, these are two different things. Terminally deluded or a particular mindset that you have is just mental conditioning where you unconsciously say some offensive things. But when you call someone gross, that's because someone is being disgusting on purpose. This is a distinction that must be made in order to understand whether a person or a character is redeemable or not. The following scene is continuing of Bukowski's case where Jennifer Walters takes an oath to speak the truth. The following observation is not of She-Hulk but about the court procedure of speaking the truth. Do people put their hand on the religious text and say that they will speak the truth even today? I mean what about those who don't believe in a specific faith or they are atheist? What book do they use? or do they not take any oath in that case do they have the liberty to lie wouldn't it be more appropriate if the oath is taken on the code by which the courts are run or the nation's constitution perhaps okay the case continues and the way they win the case is by further degrading bukowski's reputation well if it works it works But shouldn't the defendant lawyer at least question Jennifer Walters about her intentions or cross question her in some other way perhaps there is no time to go so in depth which is why this court scene feels inferior also since we don't know who this Megan the Stallion is it's impossible for us as the audience to gauge whether he would be that gullible to fall for the impersonator You know what would have been more relevant had the impersonator pretended to be someone we already know like for example Pepper Potts or Natasha Romanoff whatever let's not think about what did not happen so the judge listens to their hearing and proves the impersonator to be guilty again to reiterate my old point is it even possible that she would be punished for it wouldn't she just disappear like Wong did to escape the punishment after all the case is over finally we see the real megan the stallion now i am not american so forgive me for saying this she's weird and a perfect match for a guy like dennis bukowski which is why in the following scene when dennis suggests that he might have a shot with the real megan the stallion i would say yes go for it instead he's just a plot point to give Jennifer Walters the idea to solve her case with abomination that was clever until Jennifer broke the fourth wall to stress on the point that he actually gave an idea at this point i just want to tell the writers please don't consider audience as stupid people who need to be told what to pay attention to the following scene is the judgment where emil blonsky is given parole with one condition that he can never turn into abomination and he will have to wear an inhibitor to prevent him from turning as we know there was just one device which bruce had made for him to stay human that we know got destroyed in the accident and now there is no such device perhaps this inhibitor is like a bomb inside the skull or around the neck which was the case of suicide squad This is relevant because we are getting Marvel's version of Suicide Squad in Thunderbolts and Emil Blonsky aka Abomination is rumored to be a part of it which also means that we will see Abomination not just Emil Blonsky This is followed by something very interesting so after ignoring her friend several times Jennifer finally agrees to give an interview based on a suggestion given to her by a guy whom she did not really like i'm not criticizing here this actually happens in the real world this is followed by jennifer walters as she hulk on a news channel citizen news tonight where she talks about the case and herself i really like this scene and the cgi is really good in this one until they do something very dumb where the reporter asks her how did she come up with the name she hulk and she explains how she doesn't some reporter did 
which is stupid because we saw the reporter invent the name she hulk live on camera i have a feeling that the writers of this show really hate news reporters after that jennifer returns home and all of a sudden she is attacked by a bunch of goons with alien tech a neat call back to spider-man homecoming although it is revealed that these people robbed an asgardian construction worker makes me think that the world of mcu should look much weirder now that a lot of alien tech and alien people are just wandering around the planet but that would require higher budget so don't expect that finally this is the best scene of the series so far because this scene is funny it teases the villain and the general direction where this series is going basically the villain wants her blood to make more hulks i am not super excited for the next episode based on what i have experienced so far but i hope that the quality will only improve as the story gets a sense of direction let's talk post credit scene Although I admit that the episode 1 and 2 post credit scene is what I have liked but this one I don't know what to say I hope this is considered not canon but a blooper reel I don't understand a series that seems to be tight on budget why would they waste money on such post credit scenes even if you think about it logically this Megan the Stallion Is she even a superhuman for her to sign her as the lawyer? This does not make sense. And finally that final shot of them dancing, I finally understood the meaning of the word cringe. Thank you.